I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Purple Roads, I'm Kerry Stinson, and once again, I am so glad you're here. I am so excited about tonight's show. We have three really good friends, three really talented gentlemen that I worked with for a long time, and here they are. First, my good friend, Jeff Ayers. Hello. There's Jeff. Jeff played Baby Bop for, my God, how many years? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. And then we've got our good friend, Kyle Nelson. What's up? Kyle played BJ for how many years? 12 years. 12 years. And then the last one, he joined us near the end. Adam hey! Brown. And Adam hey. Brown played Riff. Yes. I can't even tell you guys. It feels so good. I finally saw all three of you not too long ago, and we decided we had to do this. Yes. I am so glad you guys are here. Yes. I'm well, glad to be here. Roads. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. You know, Adam, uh, Jeff and Kyle both joined me on, on the other show, and Jeff has actually been on both shows, so we are so glad we finally got you on this show. So this is so special to have you guys on. We worked together for a long time. Um, I want to start out because I know these fans are going to be crazy about this show. They want to hear all the behind the scenes and hear about you guys. So I'm going to actually start with Adam yeah. on, on your audition and finding out about being Riff. I think um, when I came out for my um, audition, when I heard about the new character and it was all about making music and all about the creativity, about the, you know, the lightings, of, of all different lights and different sounds and music. And it was just really neat as, as I went out there for my audition to learn different kind of dances and, and to, uh, create that character different than BJ and Baby Bop. And, and it was, I had a blast and I was so honored to be part of the family. And then from there, it just, it went on. And then now Kyle, Kyle was with me on tour back on uh, Barney's Big Surprise and Musical Castle. And then you joined on with um, Barney's and Friends. What was the audition like for you? And let's talk about, not for the TV show, but for uh, Barney's Big Surprise. For me, well, and Jeff and Adam can relate. Uh, every summer we have, uh, Little People of America, we have an annual conference. And back in 1997, I was checking out of the hotel in Atlanta, Georgia, and my friend Jennifer Romano, who had played Baby Bop at that time on Barney's Big Surprise, told me about this role for the character of BJ. And I knew of Barney, but I didn't really I mean, know the finer details of all the characters and such. And so I, I said, sounds great. Uh, I gave her, for, her my phone number and and went back home when I was at that time living in Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> and I got a phone call two days after convention from Lynn Corzine, oh, Sloan wow. Coleman's assistant. Oh, yeah. And she had uh, called me with her pleasant Texan accent and wanted <laughs> me to fly down to Texas, to Las Colinas at that time, to uh, tr uh, try out for the role of BJ on Barney's Big Surprise. And so when I came down, I was auditioning with two other gentlemen who had hypoachondroplasia, uh, which is a type of dwarfism that um, they're, they're, not, they're a little taller than uh, those that have a traditional achondroplasia. But uh, so there was three of us, we auditioned. I was the last one to audition and uh, at that time, it was um, uh, Penny, Penny Wilson. Uh, yeah, and we were, you know, we refer to her as Miss Penny. Everyone yeah, Miss Miss Penny. Penny watches us knows who Miss Penny is. Yeah, she was awesome. It was Penny Wilson, David Cobb, and Sloan Coleman. Wow. And we, uh, I was, I Penny Wilson, uh, Miss Miss Penny 
had done a, a choreographed dance that I had to follow along while in sh these massive clown type shoes and had my he this head on. So my, my vision, my peripheral was very limited. So it was, it was a little getting hard getting used to, but I, and I definitely enjoyed getting into character, acting like a seven year old. And so I got out of costume and I mm -hmm. spoke with Sloan, Miss Penny and David and, and that whole time that I mean, uh, Sloan Coleman was explaining the in and out of the, the tour and, and what I'd be doing. And, and so I was kind of curious, like thinking like, wow, this, and she's given me a lot of detail. And, and I asked, I asked them, so what, what does this mean? And they're like, oh yeah, you have the job. And uh, so. Well, I, you know, the funny thing, we're all smiling and laughing as you're telling this story, Kyle, it's because you are BJ. <laughs> I mean, you, you just are him. They must look at you immediately and went, yeah, I mean, we might as well make him dance because he's here, but I mean, <laughs> he is BJ. There's, yeah, I you know. Because how old were you when, when all this was going down? I was 19. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I yeah. just graduated yeah. from yeah. Fargo South High School. I was going to go to college up in Mankato, Minnesota at Bethany Lutheran College, but God had a different plan for me. Amen. Well, awesome. and you, you'd never been to Texas, had you? This was first time in Texas? Actually, no. Uh, uh, Adam and I, we've known, I've known Adam since 1991. Wow. At that time, we had the first World Dwarf Games in Chicago. And Adam sent me a pen pal letter with, with, his, <laughs> with his school photo and just this, I, he he had very good penmanship. He had very kind of he wrote like bubbly type letters, and and just was I'm I'm very um, keen on having me <laughs> on his basketball team. And I was I was recruiting. I was recruiting yeah. Kyle. I was Adam, recruiting him. Well, the thing the the neat thing is Adam his Adam has has mom who J Janet Brown is one of the most amazing people on earth. Yes. Uh, she unfortunately had passed away from cancer, but uh, her, her legacy in the world of little people and especially Dwarf Athletic Association of America, DAAA, um, had played a very important part in how little people were able to participate and organize sports. She's and like a mother so figure for Adam, all of us. Adam's mom, um, I guess, and, and Adam can chime in. Adam's mom was kind of the, the head director of coordinating these events. And, and we, like, for me, DAAA was one of the most um, exciting, engaging, it, that doing those sport activities with people of same stature and, and, and same kind of playing field, it really motivated us to, I mean, to, to work hard, to, to do our best, because I mean, it really was competitive you know, I mean, this, in, in a fair so, playing field. This is so important, Kyle, that people understand. I feel like I'm part of the community. I, I've worked with so many yeah. little people over the years, and you guys all know each other, or most of you know each other, and you're such a tight, community and um I, I i hope people see through this interview um the relationship you all have and and how close it is obviously i know jennifer very well i knew jennifer before i knew you and uh so i think it's it's so special um jeff we've talked about your audition beforehand and it's one of the funniest things i've ever heard <laughs> when did you meet these guys when did you meet kyle and adam well i knew adam oh I knew Adam when he was wearing diapers. Um, not really. I don't know if he was really wearing diapers, but um, I probably was. You know, you know. But but I knew Adam when he was a little kid. I don't. I can't even remember Adam. But how, how it must have been. Six it was De, seven, De, maybe Des Moines. Moines. Yeah, it was Des Moines, and he had to have been probably six or seven, and yep. he was a feisty little redhead kid. You know, going crazy. Oh, yeah. So there, you know. But his mother, his mother was a big mentor for a lot of little people. 
and uh, she was like a mother uh, to all of us. And she was very special. She cared and had pa a passion for uh, little people athletes. And um, she tried to help. She was really, one thing that was really cool is any, any newcomer that came on board and came into the, the Little People of America circle, she would be there to greet them. And she'd also tell the parents, it's okay. You know, I have a little one too. And he's just like you. And and kind of welcome. She was a mother. She was a mother and a sister to the, the little people community. And his dad was the same way. So, so yeah. Adam, what did your mom think of, of Barney and everyone being so many little people working with Barney and being part of the Barney family? I thought she was, I mean, it was amazing, you know, for, for me to be a part of it. And also before I joined, you know, to see Kyle, you know, join. And I think back to what Kyle was saying with our sports, it was so important to be involved with sports at our level because, you know, especially in the Barney job, it, you know, it kept us in shape and, you know, being athletic and then going and doing our, our character, you know, it, it really helped from that, from a sports aspect from it, from a character performer as um, aspect. And, she was, you know, supportive of, of I mean, hundred percent. If you're, if you're happy, you like it, you want to do it, go for it. You know, just like in sports and, and like, uh, um, to relate to Jeff, she never let anyone, you know, um, not participate, even if you couldn't afford it or didn't want to do it. They, she always include everybody, no questions asked. And that's just one thing that I've always carried on from my mom, you know, just, just care about others and be kind, you know, but also give 110%. Every time from your performance to your sports, to life, family, whatever. And so it's just something I've always carried from my mom's legacy. So that's, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. So I want to know guys, you know, we've talked a lot on this show and I've talked a lot about how physical these costumes were and um, all of our costumes were a little bit different. So we all had our own, own challenges. I'm going to start with you, Jeff. Um, you know, it's the, go to the senior of this, of this group. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I did have to wear a tutu and y'all didn't. Right. Well, so there's that. Um, yeah. what challenges on did you have, yes. Jeff? What'd what you challenges say? did you have? You know, you it, 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 the, the, the whole thing about wearing the suit, you know, all of our suits were different. You know, we, we probably tried each one on except probably carries. Right. Um, but we, they all fit us to like a glove, really. Um, it was like wearing a snowmobile outfit and then wearing clown shoes. Right. A and then uh, the performance director would make up dances and songs and stuff. And they kind of knew that we couldn't do certain things because of our big shoes. And then all of a sudden, the people that built the set might have forgot and built <laughs> a wobbly staircase or something. And, and then they had to change it after they put us in the suit and made us run the set. Right. And one of the biggest challenges was our perception, you know, yeah. that of, of, you know, we, we could only see, I could only see out of the eyes so far. And then I'd look through the mouth right. and see the floor. Yeah. So, so if we're ever running stairs, we knew the stairs were there. We knew that they had five runs on it. Right. But you still needed to kind of see the stairs. And with the the, the, the suit that we had, it being kind of dark inside, you kind of had a shadow. So you'd have to really time the steps. Yeah. And, and also you might be look down, look up and go and you know they're there, but you don't see them. So you you really got to pick your feet up. Right. You can't drag because mm -hmm. because in the shoes, there might be a little foam rubber toe. Yep. And that little foam rubber toe would catch it, catch the, the, the steps and you yeah. go down. But that's one of the hardest things. Right. A and then our uh, perception of look, uh, this, the, what we see. Right. Because if we're performing and let's just say BJ's over here, Adam's up front, and then you're over here. And I decide to take a step left and I was supposed to go right. And then you're there. You right. shoot me across the stage. Yes. 
And so and it's, it, it happened, and it happened, <laughs> and it happened, especially me. Uh, and, um, I'll take some more of that. I got something. I remember something. Yeah. And uh, and so I want to say the depth perception of of the vision, and then just getting used to our suits. Yeah. And that, but what what was really neat to all of y'all, you've lived that character. You became that character. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it, that suit kind of molded to you. So right. you were so used to it. And each of us had our little isms, you know, our Barney isms, our, our riff isms, and Kyle had his VJ isms, all the little things that we did. And, um, you know, it, but it was natural. It, it kind of came natural. You know, even when you're doing a dance or a song, you did your BJ personality, and Adam did his riff personality. And then Kerry did his Barney thing that he did. And um, that's what was so scary because we became that character. And then also with their voices, we almost knew what they were going to do. Right. You know, even though even when they did their comedy stuff, right. we kind of we kind of knew that it was coming. And, it, you know, we got so used to their their tick in the ear when, where we could hear them coming. Right. And we would just go with it. Right. And that was the scary part is yeah. when we become that character with right. them. And right. yeah. But, what, what about for you, Kyle? What did you feel like with the costume? Your biggest challenges? Uh, well, w w well, the thing is I first started out wearing a costume where the head was spring action. Yeah. And we did that on the tour. And then when I, when you and I started the, TV show, um, and I apologize, I forget her name, but she, when Karen Barnes came age, in. Age, age catches up to all of us, Kyle. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what? Well, I, I can't remember. <laughs> but, but, um, but anyway, she she worked with uh, the Muppets, and, and I hate that I forgot her name, but uh, she she really advocated uh, to having the costumes more animatronic in a sense. So, so after, after being BJ with a spring action head, uh, Jeff and I both had to use Did you do the trigger hand controls Yeah, in order. And it was basically like a bike cable and the bike cable is attached to a, to a hinge that would over. then, like you'd pull on the the bike cable and it open and close the mouth. Yeah, and that I that really presented a challenge because mm -hmm. I acclimated so well to the spring action that to then go to that mm -hmm. it it really caused me to have to think of the the syllables uh, in a manner that my body my body language. And choreography, like you, you had to kind of counter time um, your your mouth motion, and I really, I mean, at that time, was hard on myself because I didn't want to, <coughs> I didn't want to present anything, I mean, less than exceptional, and so I'm mean, building on, I'm mean, working the cable. And and doing the choreo choreography, I, that was the most challenging. And then it went from that to a servo, and they had Excellent. they had a servo. Both Jeff and I had a servo in our tail, and and um, <laughs> uh, Mark Wagenhurst at that time, he he had to be very on top of the the signal the the system that would bounce sig the uh, audio signal off of uh, Patty and J Julie and in the in their their booths uh, to to get that signal. Sometimes there would be My static, mouth would there move. would be yeah. delays, and so our mouths. <laughs> I would, it'd be like one of those kind of bad English dub type movies, right. and like you know, it's a foreign foreign movie, but I mean, they they're trying to pull in English in there, so. Right. Our mouth would be, yeah, like Jeff was doing, would be sporadically moving, when, like <clears throat> just a sh short few words with, I, mean, with pauses in between. So they quickly realized. I'd say it was probably after a period of 
It, it was like two or three shows. Did they do a couple of shows with it? They did oh, a couple yeah. of shows. Yeah, it might have been a series. Uh, was it a series or it was, not? It, it was series seven hundred, and I would say it was probably like maybe in mean, ten episodes. But I, I mean, of the ten episodes, I think I was in about three or four. Yeah, and and, and that that was uh, that I agree. That was probably the fus most frustrating thing, is because it, sometimes it, I'd pick up Patty's signal and my mouth yeah. would move, and yeah. it's like what you know and then dancing too yeah it, it was going to be easier for us because they were going to save our necks right you know because we didn't have to do this so much right and they were wanting to make it easier on us but it was a mess you know but it kind of it kind of goes back to that that saying if it's not broke don't yeah. fix it yeah and yeah. so they they eventually and, went back to the spring action and for me personally i, love I, I couldn't have been any more happier just because and that one you, took a lot of weight it. off. You've been doing it so long. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I got, that made me frustrated though, because yeah. because that thing would that it wouldn't work right, right. and then it, then it made our performance look bad too. So yeah. right. But what about we, you, Adam? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we always did it. We always did it. Yeah. Always did it. yeah. But that, I would say that was probably <clears> my most challenging experience. But like similar to what Jeff was saying, I. You, you acclimate to your environment and like when you're on set, like you figure out like for us I and mean, with the caboose, like you have four steps. I and mean, if you make the first step I and mean, and you know, like, like Jeff was saying, you got to lift those toes and you got to make sure the toes are above the step. The toes are important. If you yeah, don't yeah, get the so, toes yeah. up, if you don't get the toes up, you're going yeah. down. Yeah. Yes. So true. And then you're, you're buying us lunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. So what about you, Adam? I think when I first started, I I learned so much. I got so many heads up from Jeff and, and Kyle what to expect and everything. And I know my my head was a lot different because I, at times when my head would light up, I would add probably never, you know, a couple of extra pounds right. to my head. And I think learning uh from Kyle and Jeff from being on set from the stairs and then also making sure, you know, from the weight of the of the of the head keeping on you know for all four cameras making sure i'm looking up not looking down because the weight you know how it because we're so top heavy so yeah. make sure we're stable and everything and and that you know after the first two weeks as my muscles and my neck and my body started getting used to it it started getting acclimated but i think i'll never forget though when everybody was watching me when i first started because they wanted me to see my first fall to see how i was you know how i was going to expect i'm like well, you didn't is, want to is he going to fall you know, and, right no, we I mean, knew you were going to join the club sooner or later. Right, exactly. You know, we're like, right. And so, and because Kyle, you know, because I always had a bet, I'm like, Jeff and Kyle, like, Adam's going to be the one. Adam's going to be the one. But I'll never forget, though, Carrie, I'll never forget. Jeff and Kyle always said, when, we, when we're doing a dancing number and running with our short legs and picking up our toes, they always told me, Adam, do not stop. Keep on going. Yeah. Keep on going. Otherwise, you know, Carrie's going to run you over. Carrie's going to plow you over. Run you over. Do not stop. And so I just kept on running. I'm going to fall BJ. I'm going to fall baby bop. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. So, but no, I just, you know, after I got acclimated in the lights and everything and stuff and just, and learning so much from these amazing and, you know, you too, Carrie, it just, it just really, uh, I started after a couple of weeks feeling a uh, riff, you know, as, as part of me well, and also. You, you are know, riff. You started riff. You know, it's funny you say that. Well, you know, with the running, it's because we don't have air brakes in these suits. No. Right? I mean, <laughs> they've got weight. You get those things moving. Yep. You, you don't stop on a dime. No. So, so well, yeah. You, yeah, you. you just keep going. Yep. All right, guys. I'm going to ask you each. I want, I'm going to ask you each about your voice, but I want you to describe them with one word. One word. All right, Jeff. Give Dewey me a second. Johnson. Give Dewey, me a second. Oh, oh, oh. Dewey Johnson. One word. Energy. Now explain it. You know, every when we started, right when right when we came on, she was a ball of fire. Um, you know, when when lights would come on and when we'd start, you know, camera action, uh, she was babe up to a T. 90 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour, not slowing down and energy 24 seven. Yeah. And so she helped me become baby Bob with her energy. And, and that's anytime the mic came on, she was that way. 
and even when we were on timeout and, you know, break or whatever, right. it, you know, when we we're sitting in the wings, she was still that way. And, uh, but also a beautiful lady, you know, and I loved her to death. I was so, I'm so gift, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to be, you know, able to work with her. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, we became one, right. you know, just like you and uh, your voice and yeah. Kyle and his voice and Adam and his voice. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, and she kept us, I, I guess, uh, and in, in not insane, but, you know, kept us calm and cool when, when the hard times are going on. You know, she always, you know, she she's a friend right. and also a very talented lady. And I want to say a ball of fire, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, Kyle. One word. Petty words. OK. Now, before I answer that, uh -oh. Jocelyn Stevenson. That's that's, that's who it was. was. <laughs> Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Jocelyn Stevenson was the the. The producer that we had that worked with the Muppets. She will appreciate that. You, yes. you got that. <laughs> All right. So Patty Wirtz, I would say comedic because I know she I mean, she came from a theater background. Right. I know like she worked with Julie on in nonsense. But um she I think it was always in her nature to I mean help us. Uh, be <laughs> and uh, to, to help us to not take things so serious. Yeah. Especially, especially at times when I mean, we were just exhausted. I mean, she she was there to pump <laughs> us up, and right. she was mostly I'm mean, doing so in a comedic manner. Right. I mean, that she would, I and mean, she would feed off of Dean and Julie and Michaela at the time, and I. I, it, I, it was it was a blast. I fed off her energy. Oh, there's there's no question no question about what well, we all fed off their energy. I'll tell you, um, Adam, tell me about one word with Michaela. Sparky. Ah, all right. Sparky. sparky. <laughs> totally Sparky. Oh my God, she was a spitball of fire. I'm like when I saw her, I'm like okay. And then when I got to meet her and then when she started doing my voice, I'm like, holy cow. It's like this sparky on, you know, different things and just how, how we kind of caught on real fast and just, you know, different things and, you know, work together. But she really was always, you know, spitball of fire, you know, most um, every time on set and, and, with, and with everything and stuff. So, but, oh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> always fun. Yes. Always fun. And I'll tell you right now, my word would be passion. Where Dean went, he yes. loved what he did. He just never dang stopped. He was so committed to it, and so committed to doing the best with me. And uh, and I always loved him for it. Um, Kyle, one thing, Carrie. One thing, yeah. Carrie. Yeah, one yeah. thing about all of us, we uh, we had passion, and we had a, a, a goal that we are all trying to get to, and is that making it making our product the best out there? And every so, single one of y'all busted your tail and did that so yeah and, and don't you think jeff that's really because we all knew what we were doing and what i mean by that is we knew the crowd we knew the audience we knew how much the kids loved it how much the parents loved it for their kids you know we weren't going out there just mm. to make a paycheck we were doing something really important and you can't show up on set and be tired or be sad mm. or be mad mm -hmm. you gotta go out there and give it a hundred percent or you know well, you, 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 we, we wouldn't be able to do it Right. Know, yep. mm -hmm. Game. Get, it was time to play game. You know, play game well, on. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, and these two guys will agree with me. You know, we would see you walking around at the studio, but as soon as you put that tube on, boom! There's Baby Bob. Yeah. I mean, I, I never seen anything like it. Uh, I can just <laughs> turn right into that. It's the damn damnest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> You know, I'll go get it if you want me to. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's in that closet. It's in that closet. <laughs> yeah, that it is. But wait a minute. I think I lifted at Kyle's house the other day. So, oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yes. If, if people don't know here, we love each other uh, a lot and know each other really well. Uh, Kyle, tell me your your funniest story about Jeff Ayers. Oh well, e easy. <laughs> oh, oh, I go. So, 
So easy. one thing I think the audience should know is that amidst all the fun that we had together, uh, we always made a point of it in some form or manner to do kind of practical jokes. And Jeff, I, I, I forget exactly how it started, but one one day, going back <laughs> into the dressing room, Jeff felt inclined to take my clothes or take <laughs> take my underwear or something of that sort and hide it. No, yes. no, yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> let me let me let me get, tell you the story. the 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 way the story goes is, yeah. I called you, and you had a call time of like. 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock and our, we were already on the set and we already had, I think done a couple of takes of our shot or our scene. And I said, well, what time is Kyle's call time? And they said, well, his call time's like at 10 or 11 or maybe 12. And I said, well, watch this. And I picked up the phone and called you and woke you up and said, where are you? You're supposed to be here. No, I'm not. I got a call time at 11. Are you sure? And, uh, and then you jumped out of bed and all panicky. And I said, oh, just kidding. And I hung up. And then uh, I'll let Kyle tell the story. But I want to tell the end of it. Go ahead, Kyle. So in turn, from what Jeff did to me, I felt inclined to do something similar to what was done upon me when I was on the stage show tour. Yes. And I, so many times on that stage tour. Yes, I, I was lost a couple times. I was the greenie on that stage show tour, and <laughs> and people people enjoyed taking advantage of how na naive I was. But um, but you never stopped trying. No, no, and and I would I would jump right in it. <laughs> so, so I one day when I was I wasn't called to be on set, and Jeff was already on on set. I I went in with the help of my sister-in-law at that time, my, my son Eli was born and we went in and I, I went into the dressing room. I took Jeff's clothes. I hung them up on the ceiling and I, I taped his cell phone on the ceiling too. <laughs> and, and I, uh, I asked and my Margaret, underwear and my underwear. And your underwear. Yeah. I asked Margaret to call me when Jeff would come into the dressing room. <laughs> So that I could then call his cell phone and he could hear it up on the ceiling. <laughs> and, and he, then, wait, wait a minute. I, I, I would have, I, that was a day I was hot and sweaty <laughs> and, and I, I was delirious. And I came over to my you cubby. We, we, we each, we each had a cubby that had all of our stuff in it, had our wallet, our keys and our phone, different things like that. And then our clothes. Yeah. And so I walked over. And I was in that fog, you know, you all know what, how that is when you get off the set and you're just kind of delirious until you kind of regroup. And I walk over and I'm going, where, where's my stuff? And I start looking for my phone, my wallet. And, you know, nobody messes with our stuff. And uh, because we know nobody's going to steal our wallets and our keys and all that stuff. It's safe there. So I walk over and I'm looking. And I'm looking, and I look over at Margaret, and I look over at the Wranglers, and they just look at me like, "What's wrong?" And and then all of a sudden they start giggling, and I look up, and my 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 clothes are on the seat, and my underwear, and and, and so I was I just shake my head like I'm shaking it now. <laughs> and to put the to put the cherry on the top, I I took his keys and I parked his car on the opposite side of the building. <laughs> yeah. And and then I called him back. I said, somebody hit my wife's car. <laughs> and I said, you got to come back. I said, there's a big dent in my wife's car. What happened? And he goes, no, I parked it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we are gagging and punking on each other all year long. So, um, yes. You know what you used to do to me? Nothing. I'd be, when I'd be driving down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm driving down the down the tollway, going to work, and there's Jeff Ayers, and I look over, and he sticks his foot in his mouth, driving with one hand. <laughs> 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 you just don't see that every day. I, I 
nearly wrecked the car. But it, it was it was up through the window like this, and I'm driving. Yes, yes driving with your foot up there. <laughs> he almost wrecks. I almost all. wrecked the car. Uh, but uh, we Adam, love each other. Oh, we do. Adam, tell me one about Kyle. Come on, come on, Adam. Oh boy. You know Oh, yes. I think when we first started, I think, you know, these guys would always tease me because I was the rookie. I was the, the new one. I think one thing that um, that would always uh, they would always uh, grab my tail and pull me behind. You know, I, you know, we sit there on set and all of a sudden I'm they like, do the countdown. You know, they do the countdown you know, and we grab the countdown his tail. and then do that is as well. Um, pretty much. Oh, tell him, go, 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 now. go, 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 <laughs> go, 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 don't go. Oh, go, 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 go. And, take and, off. You know, and then um the the stage manager, I forgot her name. Um oh short short girl, um curly red hair. She would always she would yell at me like don't go, don't go, don't go. But these guys are telling them, go We're out. Going, go, 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 go. We're going, going. Or I'll go and Kyle would hold my tail so I can't go. So he'd and be, like, he'd be like go, take, <laughs> take, start over. And they wouldn't understand what we're doing. And then we start laughing and giggling because of that, you know, because of Jeff and everything. And, and then they get mad at the voices because they thought that the voices were telling this stuff in our heads. So. Right. And so I think that was a, a start of many, many fun, practical jokes. And, you know, like Kyle said, you know, we all got each other and that's all out of out of love for each other. Oh, absolutely. And you know. Kyle, tell me your favorite. Um, I don't want to say episode, but the favorite thing you ever did playing uh, BJ? Uh, I would I would say anytime I could uh, pretend like I was playing an instrument, whether it be a guitar or the drums, uh, I, I could say like one, one uh, video in particular when we did the firehouse video. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, the, the video we all know, died in. I'm sorry? The video that we almost all died in. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, <laughs> the, one, the one where we're in the the culvert, the yeah. where the yeah, where yeah, they had the, the, the flares on us and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your brother, Adam, Adam's brother, I think worked that, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Yep. And, yep. yeah that that was a fun one. Yeah. yeah. But I'm but sorry, Joe, Kyle. So what were you playing? What instrument? So Joe Phillips put put together this really catchy song about I mean, stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. And oh yes, yes. Yeah, so I, I got a jam out on a guitar to that. Um, uh, and anytime we'd be able to do the dino dance, yeah, uh, that was always fun. Um, I, I, I in, in all honesty, I the opportunity the opportunities we've had to perform at the Macy's Day Parade, I would yeah. say, I mean, we're probably pr probably the ones that would stand out the most because. I and mean, one miss penny I and mean, you you want to you want to provide or I and mean, put on the best product and performance possible because I mean, everyone is watching and yeah. to have that one opportunity uh to perform live on uh on NBC I and mean, it, it I and mean, it was really exciting and and you know and you have one opportunity you have one one chance to make that right, and unfortunately, for me and, and and all of us, and when we would do it, and we would perform and and do all the choreography, and and in that that minute and a half or two minutes, whatever it was, and I it just really got your heart pumping because I you can't mess that up. No, -uh. <laughs> that what's so funny yeah, is we yeah. we we wait at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, on that float before it got started, and then we go on, go live at. Nine, you know, nine thirty, ten o'clock, or something like that, and then it, it went so fast. I mean, it was quick. Well, the perform, yeah, the performance was quick. Going down the street wasn't quick. No, that, I know that. That took three hours. You know, it's <laughs> interesting you're saying that, guys. For me, it was actually the night before uh, the rehearsal on the street. The dry run, yes. Yeah, uh, the the rehearsal on the street in front of Macy's. There was just so much energy. You know, it's the night before Thanksgiving, and there's just so much energy in New York. And I think for people to go, oh, my gosh, there's Barney Baby Bob BJ, you know, out on the street in New York was such a cool experience. And uh, it was just such a 
the didn't energy. They, didn't they blow up the balloons then? Didn't they blow the balloons up at night? Yeah. They, they, yeah. Were blow, they blew the balloons up well, at, yeah. at night too. Yeah. After we rehearsed, we'd go over and, and watch the balloons being uh, blown up. I never, never saw that. I was never part really? of that. I heard yeah. about that. Yeah, I heard how cool it was, but I never saw it. So, yeah, so, so Adam, what was your favorite thing that you did playing the role of Riff? I think when I heard um, the original song, um, there's uh, music everywhere, you know, with the, you know, kind of like with Kyle with the instruments and learning yeah. all different ones. And then with the uh, different tunes of the, um, of the head lighting up and everything, all yeah. the different colors, and then just learning all different stuff. I think that was really, it really started to establish my character, you know, that song right there. And then as I went on and, you know, learned th different things of, of how to um, create music and everything to, Elaborate with Baby Bop and Barney and, and BJ. So I think that music everywhere, the, the song really was uh, one of my um, highlights as a start of riff. Well, you know, it's interesting about that because, you know, we've been around forever, the, you know, the right. characters. And here you came in um, after these three dinosaurs were so established. What was that right. like for you? And not only not only for the character, but also for the fact that, you know, you were joining the set and all the, you know, we we were kind of old pros at that time. I think one thing I've learned right away and one thing I was learning from the directors and then from you as well is to be different than BJ, you know, be yeah. a whole different character. Yeah, we're, you know, you know, book, um, I know B, uh, Baby Bop is a total different sure. uh, character well, but just being, um, you know, being unique and being totally different. Some of your boys, but also being not the same, um, Personality, yeah, personality. Thank you. Um, that and just being, um, being all three different types and personality and stuff. So, so we have a lot of people that watch this show, um, that that want to get in the business or are in the business, um, character actors, puppeteers. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I want to ask this to all three of you, but I'm, I'm going to start with uh, Jeff. What advice would you give to someone that wants to get in this? You know, you were doing mascots back in school before uh, you joined Barney and Friends. What advice would you give someone that wants to be an actor or performer? Just a lot of hard work, a lot of practice. Um, and one of the main things is don't give up because it, it takes you a while um, to get to get that. Yes. Um, I'm going to kind of go off the rail a little bit. I used to be a mascot in high school and then a mascot in college. And I taught mascots all over the place for NCA, National Cheerleaders Association, all that type of stuff. And I reached in trying to go professional. I, I had a connection with the San Diego Chicken. He hooked me up with the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> and, and that gig fell through. And about that time, um, I went to the Cowboys and taught, had a meeting with Stephen Jones Wow! and also talked to the Carters and my cheerleading sponsor hooked me up with the, the Carters. The Carters with the Mavericks, right? The Mavericks, uh, yeah. Mr. Carter and Miss Carter. She, she worked at a bank over in Coppell or something like that, or had, had connections. I don't know exactly. It's been a long time, so I can't remember the, the whole story, but I went over there and dropped off my, my reel or my, my game plan. Right. And, uh, they didn't want to do a mascot just yet. And, uh, and then I met with Steven Jones and he said, you know what, Jeff, he goes, you're very talented. Something will fall in your lap. And uh, about that time, that's when Barney fell in my lap. Uh, you know, I went and auditioned for, for Barney and all that type of stuff. And, uh, and then the story goes is I end up doing, Charlotte Jones' son's birthday party <laughs> as Elmo. They wow. called me up and wanted me to be Baby Bop, and I told them, I said, I can't do that. I said, uh, I can play any character you want me to play, but I can't play any of the Barney characters. Yeah. And um, they asked me, well, what about Elmo? And I said, sure. And um, he's the the gentleman that uh, was the quarterback for Highland Park that just yeah. went to, that went to Arkansas. That wow. was the it was him that, that I did Elmo for. Wow. And uh, through that connection, 
uh, Charlotte called me back and said, um, it, 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 you wanted to know if, you know, I do those things. And I said, yeah, well, I ran into, uh, I did a, a gig off to the side for Fox Sports Southwest. And I dressed up as a strong man in like a Speedo outfit, like a muscle man outfit. Of course and, did. And, and I lifted up. I lifted up one of these big beams and what they did is they had a blue screen and a forklift that was pulling this. It looked like a huge TV screen and they had a uh, Fox sports Southwest on it. And it looked like I was lifting it. Well, I became friends with Rowdy uh, um, clutch uh, Houston Comet or whatever his name is, the Houston Rockets mascot yeah. and also uh, Mavs man. And we are all sitting in a Winnebago. It, it, wait, that was our green room, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we were sitting there, and they go, so and that was about the time when Mini Me, the Mini Me character started. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we all came up with, hey, let me be your Mini Me. And I asked him, I said, don't go pay a bunch of money for an outfit. Let me have one of your old outfits and we'll chop it. And Mav, Mavs man agreed with it. Uh, Rowdy agreed with it. And Clutch agreed with it. But I couldn't afford to go down there on my dime. Uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, an LPA Wild. guy. Uh, uh, Stephen Wilde. Wild. They, they called him and asked him to do it. Um, but but the thing was, is I was still doing, I think I was still doing Barney. I mean, it was very early stages. And I said, I can't have it to interfere with the, the Barney stuff. Sure. And um, so I kind of did it part time. But then, you know, Barney was much better than that situation because it wasn't a full time gig. So. Right. What about you, Adam? What what could you give? What words of encouragement would you give someone looking to get into this business? <clears throat> I think um, you want to have passion. You want to, you know, you want to. um uh it's like in your blood, you know, for to go out and do what you and for your audition and enjoy what you want to do for your for your character or role, you know, especially with, you know, TV or, or Broadway or whatever. And that's one thing I've always learned, you know, for you love what you do and then that kind of thing. And that's why I've learned over the years through Barney and through other jobs I've done. That's I've always since I was 18 years old to now, I just it's in it's in my blood. That I've always loved what I do to prefer, be a performer, and I just um, I I tell people just you know be yourself, be you, don't be any, um, anyone else. Go out there and give 110 percent, and just do the best you can. Show your personality and your love. Smile and have fun. That's the main thing. That, that's all you can do. Yeah. And so, so. One thing I, our audience. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Uh, well, one thing I want to point out our audience needs to know is Adam performed on Radio City Music Christmas Spectacular. Yeah. Yes. And so kind of the tie-in with our, our past uh, episodes that you've had, uh, Adam is quite familiar with Radio City. And mm -hmm, kind of yep. a neat story to my relationship with Adam is when, when we attended the 97 Atlanta LPA convention. That's right. We both were auditioning for Radio City at yep. that time. They they had a group of representatives for Radio City there, and and so and that 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 was kind of a starting point for me. So I and I was very very new to the idea that I I could get into the entertainment business because I'm a little person. And that there is a there's an outlet out there uh, in the entertainment business for for little people, um, and I, for, for me it was very new, and so I, I auditioned for that as well as uh, and for Barney, and I, I at that time I remember um, one of our friends uh, Emily uh, I forget her name at that time but she. Um, Oh, we're forgetting names left and right yeah. tonight, boy. We're getting, I, think, we're I, getting old. I, think, I think that's <laughs> when I told you, Kyle. I think uh, when we auditioned for Radio City in '97, and then when you heard about Barney, you know, that's when I told you. I go, "Hey, bud, 
go with you know with whatever Where, you've got what what city was that in when y'all were auditioning atlanta atlanta yeah because i went i went with sloan yes. sloan and i went and auditioned people yeah and, and that's it yeah that's that's when we were auditioning people i think i was with jen i think jen was there mm-hmm and uh, they already had one run. They already had a couple of was Pat O'Connell and and Pam and uh, who was one they one's already on the road doing it. Yep. And yep. then they needed they needed more people. Right. And yep. Lee was Lee. One, Lee was one of the Lee was already there. You? Lee was okay. already there. Pat O'Connell was already on the tour. Yeah. And okay. I had replaced Mike Hagan. OK, the, because uh, because I got a call. I got a. I got a call from uh, Lynn because I knew Lee personally. Yeah. Uh, because he went to my junior college and and did my Cardinal mascot gig after I left, and um, and then after he finished that, I recommend him to go try out for Baby Bob, yeah. and uh, the rest is history. You know, it's, it's funny, Jeff. You know, you you work with the mascots, Adam. You did Radio City, and a lot of people don't know Kyle. You toured with Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was Tell us uh, about that. So yes, Lee and I, when we, when I was on my first year of the Barney tour in the spring of '98, I was asked by um, Lori Berry, who was our production assistant. She was married at that time to Jake Berry. She explained to Lee and I that there was this um, tour for Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon Osbourne at that time was wanting little people. And of course, I, me being this young 19 year old, (laughs) I was was immediately hooked and likewise with Lee. And, and so we, uh, that was quite an experience, but uh, one that really, taught me a lot in regards to the music industry and how bands really had to fend for themselves. And and like bands like Incubus, System of a Down, and that are pretty well known today at that time were performing on the second stage. And and they they and they were getting paid pretty minimally, but they would be provided by their record label. And so I, I really admired their their love for music, and no, I mean, regardless of their circumstances, I and mean, they were going to do everything in their means possible to make their band known. And they did. They had. They they capitalized on that opportunity. And for me, fortunately, like in Lee, I got to um, sing on stage with Limp Bizkit. Uh, and I got to play the drums with the Melvins. Oh, cool. Um, that is cool. Uh, I, I I was dressed up as a kind of this uh, theatrical court gesture, kind of medieval type court gesture, and and Lee primarily was this medieval like devil character. And our first experience, it was we flew to Milton Keynes, England, and there was about seventy five thousand people. Wow. Um, out there and, and the, it was a two-day festival for Ozfest there and my job at that time was very short-lived but uh Elisa because you took were, away they, everything from yeah. the probably they you got all the attention so well we yeah we, we we were supposed to go out on stage and Ozzy Osbourne had this squirt gun that was basically like, like a power washer and and so he would squirt the he would squirt the audience, and then he'd drop the squirt gun. Uh, and Lee or I would have to go back out and then pick it up, put it on a stand, and then we'd make sure that his tea and his water and everything was was right. And then we kind of prance off. But um, I what scared me was I people chanting like, "Throw the midget! Throw the midget!" And and of course, <laughs> I, in the little people community. The M word midget is is a, a very derogatory term. Of, and and, 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 and hey, you're bringing that up, when did you start seeing that change with that word? It's uh, still out there. Well, it's still out there, though. Be out there, but do you see it changing? Is it better? 
Yes. Mm. I, so, I, it it, it depends. It depends on the community you're with. Yes. Uh, because Amen. it's it's about location. Uh, it's about education. Yeah. Uh, quality of people you're with. Uh, yes. There's still people, and there's people in the workforce that still use it. So it's 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 not a, a blind word. They still use that word. But um, I, I would say in the entertainment business, there's there's definitely been more exposure and ed- education to how yeah yes. little people are portrayed. Because yep. thanks to LP, thanks to Little People Big World, they've they've yeah. educated a lot of people. Yep. But for I think for the longest time before, I mean, little people were I mean, offered opportunities to play roles that were more uh, like F- fantasy, fantasy, fantasy based. And, and I think that the likes of Peter Dinklage and um, uh, Warwick Davis, yeah. and, and I'm sure there are others, they definitely kind of paved more of the way to allowing little people to be portrayed um, no different than any other actor in a normal um, setting. So I, I think that over time, like, and you, you'll see too, like in, for example, in the movie, Lord of the Rings, a lot of the, I mean, the hobbits and the, and the dwarfs, I mean, they're played by people of average stature and they just used, I mean, cinematography CG to, and to make, to make them look smaller. And I think that, I think that the entertainment business, they, they were listening to a lot of people that uh, were wanting to be respected in different, in different environments, different work environments. And, and I, I certainly respect and, and identify and understand to, to those people's perspectives. Uh, but I think in a lot of ways too. I mean, when you're in the the when you're in the entertainment business, um, the the primary premise is to entertain, to to make people laugh. And for me, I I, I it's I I'd never really I, mean, I I played elves and I've played I mean, leprechauns and such. I I looked at it primarily as uh, entertainment and, and an opportunity to to earn decent money and yeah, and, but didn't and, you feel like when you were doing that, Kyle? Don't you think though when you were doing? I mean, you were still doing that. You can still do that out of respect and love, right? yeah. Because you're playing that doesn't mean you should be treated any differently. No, no, I think. I think there is definitely a fine line to how, when you're in uh, an environment where people, uh, if, if they're being belligerent or uh, being abusive uh, verbally, uh, I think that that is definitely out of line. And, and it's, it's experiences like that, where for me, I, I, try, I, I, I try and take opportunity to educate people. I know that for me, I worked at Lowe's Hove Improvement Store for about 10 years. And that to me was like a, a, a good um, kind of focus on how people perceive or, or look at little people, especially children. I, I fully expect, and I'm sure Jeff and Adam can relate to this, children are so innocent to the things yeah. in which they say based upon what they see for the first time. Yeah. And so yep. I... I, in that experience, I, I really wanted to take and take hold of it to be able to stand at the exit door of Lowe's as a customer service representative and be able to tell a kid like, hey, my name is Kyle Nelson. I'm a little person. This is how I was born. And a good number of parents really took to that and they could see that I was trying to op- I, I take on that opportunity. But I think, unfortunately, and I think in, in in many ways unintentionally, there are parents who who establish an unintentional stigma when yeah. they they have their child and like, let's go, Johnny, let's go, Susie, like like. And, they automatically and they automatically pull you pull them away like it's bad, yep. and yep. that's we don't want that. We want no. to educate them 
first and yeah. let them know what you're what we what the way I look at it is we educate the parents through the kid. We teach the kids so the parents can see what's going on and they'll get a better understanding of the proper word of what we're called. My yep. name is Jeff. His name's Kyle. His name's Adam. Not a not a fairy tale role, not dwarf. Right. Yeah, we we right. have a name. And so the whole idea is to educate the parent through the kid and, right. and, and while the kid's watching. And you know, that's that's the hardest part, because most of the time these things come from the parent. The, 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 the word that's coming out of the kid's mouth, they've learned it from their parent. And right. I don't know if you all think that, but that's the way I get it. So. I, I, I completely agree. I agree. And I think that that as I'm probably as a youth, like seeing those experiences where parents are kind of pulling their child, like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I don't be embarrassed because I fully expect that from a child. But I think that that is instilled in the child. And when they're an adult, they, they may feel I, that it's important to avoid I, any kind of confrontation out of fear of embarrassment. And, and I think that it can go vice versa. I, and I, I think as little people, we, we have in our conventions every summer, and I've come across little people who, who may have never been around other little people. And the convention is their first experience. It's a scary situation. And, yeah. Yes. And, and, so and it's kind of just right in front of them. And, and they're seeing other little people. They're like, and, I'm, and, and, and I had that initial experience um, my first time attending the conference and seeing like, do I really walk that way? Yeah. Or do I look like that? I don't do I look, look like, like that? that. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, guys. And we're seeing this, obviously it's kind of interesting you're in this conversation right in the middle of what's going on in this country, but it's really about the fact it is Jeff, it is Kyle, it is Adam, right? I, you know, it's one of the things I loved about being on Barney is we didn't talk about it. We didn't, we, and you guys never said, Hey, can you slow down? Because I'm a little person or there was no excuse that no one treated anyone different. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a shame that we don't understand that point. It, yeah. it, it, you you know, know, the, 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 you're missing out if you don't go meet Jeff Ayers for Jeff Ayers. Yeah. And that's, that's what, that's what some there. people, the, the one of the things that, that uh, people will ask me that, that, that's never met me. They go, well, what do you want to be called? And I'm going, Jeff, Jeff. My, my name's Jeff. Hello. Oh, really? And, you know, especially in the, what's so funny is when I, when I'd go on auditions or, or for an interview, these guys probably have had the same situation. You get shell shocked. The, the people have different things that they say and it's like, okay, you know, and, and it's an educational thing. Yeah. That, well, they're, they're, um, what is the what is the proper term or what yeah is what proper, is the proper term what do we call a, you and my name you is know, jeff it, yeah, it, 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 <laughs> yeah. or kyle or adam and oh, it, right. but it, it's and it's still out there yeah, and sure. you know it, it, there's still a lot of hate not towards us but there's a little there's still a lot of people that that have a chip on their shoulder and they treat us bad too well, I, you I, know? I don't know if it's a chip on the shoulder they just don't they don't realize what they're missing. Yeah. For whatever and, reason, in, yeah. instead of getting to know the person, mm -hmm. um, they're missing out. I, I, I got to end today's show okay. with a funny note, which is that my father used to go in the grocery store and he would go in and he turned down an aisle and explained, I used to shop where your dad shop. So he did shop, shop in the same store and Jeff would climb the damn shelves <laughs> and he'd be up at the top trying to get coffee or something my dad come running down the aisle jeff Ayers, get there and get that get down i'm going but mr get Smith, I can, i'm independent i can do it you know but he would come in because all you had to do is let me know so, no dad question oh, I, loved your, I loved your dad your dad rocked man they, they need to rocked. have an olympic event for little people at grocery stores or something like that to, to show to show yeah. people how 
where we're holding each other up and, and doing cheerleader stunts, getting the pickles. Jeff on Kyle's shoulders and then tossing the basket. And, and you know, and that's that's one thing about us that you know it's kind of off the rail a little bit that we kind of figure out what stores to shop at. You know, because there's different things like at Walmart, you can find things at certain levels. And then over at Kroger, there might be something else. And uh, but sometimes that doesn't stop us. And, and, you know, if there's nobody around to help. We just we're all of us have been brought up independently to 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 do it ourselves. That's one thing I think my parents, my parents are gone. But one of the things my dad taught me is to get a chair. And my parents wasn't small. They were average size. Everybody in my family was average size. And they taught us to, to basically, you're going to have to do it yourself and yeah. to get it yourself. And both of these guys right here were brought up the same way. And I think that's why we're, our head's on straight, you know, if you want to say that. Um, <laughs> that we're, yeah. we're, 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 we're a little bit more balanced. We're a little bit more balanced. And, um, yeah. and, you know, thanks for our parents uh, for, for, you know, sending us out in the big world, you know, and not sheltering us. And uh, and I, I see it through them because I, I can tell that their parents cared and pushed them to to get going and um, and not hand everything to them. So, guys, I can't thank you enough. Um, I thank can you. tell you right now, we got to do this again. Yeah, we can go on and on and on yes. and on. Hey, I'm, so- I'm still on, so let's keep talking. <laughs> I know. Oh, my guys. Hey, um, I have a mute button. Is that why you have a mute button? Yeah, just for you. <laughs> Thank you. Are you are you gonna wrap it up? Do you have something you want wrap to it say? Up. Wrap it up. No, I didn't mean to step on you. Go ahead. No, no. no. <laughs> Hey, thank you guys so much. I love you all so much. You beautiful, beautiful people. And uh, we are doing this again soon. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your purple road. We'll see you next week.